For the next few months, GCTV is honored to be able to display in our lobby gallery a few of the landscape paintings of longtime artist Robert Dykin, who recently passed on January 29, 2019. Bob was raised in Reinerton, Pennsylvania, where he worked in his dad's garage until 1944 when he joined the Marines. Discharged in 1945, he entered Molenberg College on a football scholarship, majoring in science. In New Jersey, after college, he worked in education as a teacher and coach and got his master's in education from Seton Hall University. Relocating with his young family to Northfield, Vermont in 1968, he became superintendent of the South Washington South Supervisory Union of Schools. After retirement, he wintered in Sebring, Florida, and with the passing of his wife, left Vermont and spent his time between Sebring and Coleraine, Massachusetts. Painting is part of my heritage. My father was a good painter, and he went back to it in his later years. Well, my uncle's was a good amateur painter, too, and I used to draw a lot when I was younger, so I guess it was in my blood. Painting was always a part-time relaxation hobby for many years of his academic career, only becoming his full-time focus upon his retirement. Bob was convinced that only by painting from nature can an artist hope to capture the subtle colors and ever-changing moods of North Country environments. His cold weather scenes were frequently painted while knee-deep in the snow, portraying the light and shadows peculiar to Vermont winters. He initially painted the mountains, streams, and woodlands of rural New England, but regularly traveled to Maine and Canadian provinces to paint coastal subjects as his interests expanded. Interestingly, he did very few landscapes of Florida. I'm largely a self-taught painter and had no formal academic instruction in painting, except I've gotten one-to-one -one sessions from my friends. My friends, however, were well-known artists like George Carpenter, a nationally known oil painter and watercolorist, Pamela Fox, Tom Curtin, Robert Frick, and Paul Strisick, and Ken Gore, art instructors from Massachusetts. George helped me more than anyone as there's nothing like on-the-job training. We often took painting vacations together, sharing techniques and practicing what broad stroke mentors like John Carlson taught about landscapes. Bob primarily considered himself an oil painter though later years showed great ability with his watercolor work, which he considered just drafts or sketches for his oil paintings. Through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, he had his work showing in galleries and exhibitions all over New England and mid-Atlantic states, winning multiple awards and recognitions. His work is included in private and corporate collections in over 20 states and several foreign countries. One of his oils, Twin Birches, was accepted in the American Artists Professional League's Grand National Exhibition in New York City. Another of his large oils was selected to represent Vermont and is hanging in the Office of the Association for School Curriculum Development National Headquarters in Washington, D.C. In his later years, he preferred to just make art rather than focus on the distribution and recognition saying he had already done all of that and he didn't feel he needed the attention to really enjoy what he was doing. It's a fascinating business. You can only paint two or three hours and the light changes. You have to get the lights and darks in early and do the details later. I use my studio for some of the finishing work, but philosophically, I'm committed to painting my landscapes on location. I like the outdoors and really like to see in person what is going on to capture this the way I want to. I try to capture the mood and effect of light on various subjects. I don't paint much during the summer because there's nothing but green. Fall, winter, and spring are my seasons for getting out and finding art. Winter light and snow to me is the most intriguing and challenging to capture and create as you need to pay special attention to the colors and luminosity of snow. Bob was also a very generous teaching artist, sharing his craft with hundreds over the years officially in classes and workshops and in simple one-on-one -on -one demonstrations and studio visits. He loved going to museums, exhibition, and galleries, 
always encouraging others in their work and showing great respect and appreciation for the creative. It seemed whenever someone said they were not creative or talented, he would gently poke at them and say, why not just give it a try for fun? In his classes, he would start by saying, one can read, study, and take courses forever, and all of that is valuable, but only by painting and making mistakes can one mature as an artist. And in regard to his painting, I think there's a great misconception about landscape painting. Some people think the measure of a painting is in the literalness of the translation. To me, landscapes incorporate all the principles of abstract design. I translate what I see into scenes, into well-composed pieces of art, as I'm not from the super realist school. In honor of Bob, his work will be hanging in the lobby from April 1st to June 28th. So if you get a chance, stop on by to enjoy his landscape visions during the special once-in-a-lifetime local area exhibit.